Atari's 1980 fantasy game Adventure has gone down in video game history. But not just because it's one of the most influential titles of all time. It's also credited with containing the first ever video game Easter egg, a room containing the text created by Warren Robinette. Fast forward to the present and there are entire sections of the web devoted to uncovering the Easter eggs in games new and old. And many developers have gone all in on making and hiding these hidden secrets for their most eagle-eyed fans. Dust off your granddad's dear stalker hat and polish that magnifying glass because it's time to take a look at some of the most brilliant Easter eggs hidden in your favorite games. Hidden in Plain Sight the motivation of Dead Space protagonist Isaac is wrapped up in the fate of his girlfriend, Nicole, who is trapped somewhere on the same necromorph-infested ship he is. Isaac spends the entire game trying to save his love, but spoilers, in a heart-wrenching, mind-blowing twist, Isaac realizes that the Nicole he's been seeing all game was nothing more than a hallucination. Seeing no way off the ship and afraid of becoming a necromorph herself, the real Nicole took her own life through lethal injection. Even more depressing is that, upon studying the chapter names in Dead Space, Nicole's status was staring the player right in the face all along. Take a look at the first letter in each chapter name. New Arrivals, Intensive Care, Course Correction, Obliteration Imminent, Lethal Devotion, Environmental Hazard, Into the Void, Search and Rescue, Dead on Arrival, End of Days, Alternate Solutions, Dead Space. Put the first letter in a string and they spell the phrase, Nicole is dead. Yeah, that easter egg's well hidden and all, but it's a pretty rotten one. Chalk it up to experience. The team at Remedy Entertainment boasts a nice list of hit intellectual properties, from the Max Payne series to Alan Wake. But the company branched out into new territory when it released Quantum Break in 2016, both by creating a brand new property and by melding two worlds, video games and live action television, into one experience. But just because Remedy tried out a new franchise, that doesn't mean it forgot its older ones. Upon entering a lecture hall, you'll notice a large chalkboard that looks to be filled with the typical scribbles of a professor who'd recently taught a class. But if you study the chalk writing more closely, you'll start to see that the subject matter concerns Alan Wake. And even more interesting, it seems to lay out the events that Alan experienced in his previous two titles, Alan Wake and Alan Wake's American Nightmare, as an English literature professor might lay out a work of fiction. Ahead of the game? If you've ever played a first-person shooter, chances are you know the name John Romero. He's the godfather of first-person shooters, having brought us Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, and Quake. He's the co-founder of id Software, a studio that still works on the Doom franchise. But to players of Doom 2, released in 1994, Romero is well known for being the very face of evil. The final boss of Doom 2 is a horned head that spawns tons of enemies. The player needs to hop on an elevator and use a rocket launcher to blast his exposed brain to bits, or use a cheat to enter his skull and unload on a sprite version of John Romero's head. That's right, Romero's disembodied noggin was placed behind the wall and out of sight by id's John Carmack as a joke. It was a total joke, like the artists were playing a joke on me sticking my head back there. Shooting Romero's head several times will end the level. Believe it or not though, Romero actually shows up twice in that final mission. That garbled gibberish you hear when you first enter the room containing the icon of sin is his voice. When played backwards, the audio actually sounds like... Win the game, you must kill me, John Romero. A notch in his belt. Back in 2011, Mojang, the studio behind Minecraft, announced it was working on a collectible card game called Scrolls. In that same year, Bethesda Softworks also planned to release a game with Scrolls in the title, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Despite the games clearly not being in the same genre, Bethesda didn't take kindly to Mojang's plans to use the name Scrolls and sent a legal threat to cease and desist use of the word. Mojang co-founder Marcus Pearson, known on Twitter as Notch, playfully challenged the team at Bethesda to a Quake 3 deathmatch for the rights. But unfortunately for the game world, his offer was refused. Bethesda soon filed suit instead. 
Despite the legal standoff that was still ongoing by the time Skyrim was released, an Easter egg uncovered in the game shows that Mojang still had some fans inside Bethesda. When players ascend to the highest point in the game, located at the throat of the world, they can pick up an axe that appears to be placed as a tribute to the Minecraft team. It's called the Notched Pickaxe, with its name combining two things, the nickname of Minecraft's creator, Notch, and the pickaxe that plays such a crucial role in Minecraft's gameplay. The suit between the two companies was later settled in 2012. Oh Captain, my Captain! Following Hideo Kojima's extremely public breakup with Konami, the world wasn't quite sure what to make of a brand new Metal Gear title without the legendary director at the helm. And when Metal Gear Survive arrived in early 2018, its reception wasn't all that great, with some outlets criticizing the game's lack of variety and slew of eyebrow-raising microtransactions. But in spite of the fact that Konami is continuing Metal Gear without Kojima, and that it appears Konami as a company continues to host some bad feelings towards its former star employee, the developers of Survive may have managed to sneak in a tribute to the former big boss of the Metal Gear franchise. When you first load up Metal Gear Survive and create your in-game character, you're shown a list containing both your name as well as the names of other soldiers. And someone noticed that when you take the first letter of each last name starting at the fourth name, the letters together spell out K-J-P-F-O-R-E-V-E-R, -E -E as in Kojima Productions Forever. It's an Easter egg Konami has yet to confirm, but the possibility that the people working on Survive intentionally hid this tribute to their captain in the game warms our cold, cold hearts. Deja Antandu One of the more joyful video game Easter eggs doesn't have to do with what's hidden in one particular game, but what's hidden in many games. It's Totaka's song, the melody that seems to burrow its way into most of Nintendo's titles, leading to a mini treasure hunt every single time Nintendo puts out a new game. See if this little ditty rings a bell. The story behind Totaka's song centers around Kazumi Totaka, a composer at Nintendo whose body of work includes games like Mario Paint, Yoshi's Story, Animal Crossing Wild World, Wii Sports Club, and more. Totaka first included his 19-beat tune in 1992's X for the Game Boy, and for reasons unknown, continued to hide the song in random Nintendo games that followed. And good news for all Easter egg hunters, Totaka still works in Nintendo. So if you've enjoyed hunting down his tune all these years, you'll still have plenty of digging to do in the future. Thanks for watching. Click the SVG icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.